roast, stir-fried or grilled? How do you like yours? Singapore's Satay Street is a smoky reminder of how much many of us still love our meat. But the meat industry is just not good for the environment. We use a lot of land to grow food for the animals and they produce a lot of greenhouse gases. And that's why we are looking at alternatives these days. Now there are plant-based meat substitutes, but it's also possible to grow meat just from animal cells. And that's why I've come to this restaurant to have a very special meal. Lab-grown chicken, prepared today for me by Chef Jeff. To all intents and purposes, this is chicken, even though it didn't come from... A slaughtered animal? Yeah. It is chicken. Okay. Come from a cell. I guess this doesn't come out like a chicken breast covered in skin. It doesn't have veins in. So there's a difference in what you experience as you cut through it. Yeah. It's a very wet product. We can add anything to it and we can shape it the way we want it to be. So the interesting thing is that we design the machine itself. Whatever shape we want, we can make skin, thigh. Can you make feet? Can you make <laughs> beaks? Can you make feathers? You don't eat that, right? So we don't grow that. We don't make that yet. But he didn't say no. <laughs> OK, I think it's time. Yeah. Could I trouble you to uh, cook me a chicken skewer? Absolutely. While my skewers are sizzling, it's time to discuss a not very well-known and pretty unpleasant issue. Now, lab-grown meat sounds a lot more humane, doesn't it? It sounds like no animals are harmed in the process. But unfortunately, that's not quite true. Cultivated meat is possible. It allows the consumer to eat meat without the killing. That, that is the obvious. But in order for cultivated meat to grow, uh, we need to introduce a catalyst. Uh, most traditionally up to today, fetal bovine serum, a serum that's extracted from the fetuses of cow, is most commonly used. This unpalatable fact not only calls into question the ethics of cultivated meat, but it also makes it very expensive to produce. However, Good Meat has received approval for a different type of catalyst, one that uses plant-based material instead of that from unborn cows. And it's not the only alternative approach either. At the nearby National University of Singapore, they're using magnets to produce these so-called growth factors that help cells multiply. Again, this doesn't just remove the moral issues, but like the lactoferrin we saw earlier, if you can make the key ingredient easier to produce, you could unlock the whole industry. The reason that cell-based meat is so expensive is because the factors they have to add back to make the muscle grow in a dish. You know, if I'm able to produce for you a hamburger, but you have to pay six times more for it, you probably will actually opt for an animal-based product, right? So we have taken a large part of the cost out of actually ultimately producing cell-based meat. We have taken that out. Whereas fetal bovine serum, it comes at a good price. So we're able to reduce it into a range that most people can probably afford. But making cultivated meat as affordable as normal meat doesn't guarantee that people will accept it. If we look across history, for example, Humanity has embraced many foods that were unnatural to begin with. Think yogurt. Really took off in 1900 because of the introduction of bacteria, right? Lactobacillus. And now, you know, yogurt is seen every corner of the world, every supermarket shelf. I think about that same analogy for cultivated meat, right? Um, the company that solves these basic factors finds the lactobacillus. Uh, would catalyze the industry, right? And then obviously there will be a natural consumer awareness journey, but you know, before long perhaps, you know, it'd be something that we used to think or worry about. Okay, the time has come. My lab-grown chicken skewers are ready. Thank you. Anticipation's killing me. This is my first ever taste of cultivated chicken. Yeah, it's nice. All right, now the real test. I'm going to have the chicken on its own without the uh, peppers and the onions. I don't think there's any way that I would be able to tell that this is not traditional chicken. 
Now, the truth is, in the near future, we are going to have to rethink how we grow enough food for everyone. And look, I've eaten insects, I've eaten salad grown in food computers, and I've drunk algae fed on CO2 captured from a power station. There are plenty of really interesting food ideas out there, if we've got the stomach for them. Mm.